So let's begin this video with showing you how I make my tie plates. I just have a piece of scrap, 10 or 20 thousandths ABS, and I've spray painted it with just a variety of camo and uh, primer coats, just so it looks kind of rusty. Now what I want to do is I want to cut a strip the width of my tie plates. And in O scale, in the period I'm modeling, that's about seven inches. So I've marked off seven inches with my caliper. And now I just want to cut a straight edge strip of plastic. ABS doesn't snap off quite as cleanly as polystyrene. So several passes are necessary. So with that now free, this is the strip we're going to use to create the tie plates over at the handmade dual gauge turnout. Now, with our tie strip cut to the appropriate width for our tie plates, comes the time we're going to slide this under the rails. Sometimes your rails may sit tightly against the ties, and you may have to lift up the rail a little bit to get it under. With it under, I now position the tie plate to the appropriate length so there's enough overlap here that's appropriate. Now what I've done is I've put a needle into a small pin vise, and what I want to do is I want to create the spike holes. So for this first one, I'm going to create a spike hole, and I'll create its partner over here on the other side. And I'll do the same thing on the back side. Now with those spike holes in place, I'm going to take my spike and drive it into just one of the holes. and pressing it in, I drive that spike home. And there we go. Now, I'll come in with another spike into one of the holes on the opposite side of the tie plate. And I'll put that in. Oh, bent a, bent a spike. And we'll put that spike in and drive it home. Now with both of those tie, the spikes in that tie plate, I'll come with my chisel blade and at the appropriate length of the tie plate, I'll just give it a little wobble and I'll cut that off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it to the next tie plate position. Now here on my dual gauge, this is kind of a tight place. The question I have to ask myself is, do I want to have a separate tie plate for the narrow gauge third rail, in which case I'll have to cut and spike differently here, or do I want to make a full width tie plate that includes the frog? And I think just for the ease of, of this today, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a full width tie plate. And that's the beauty of this technique is you can custom make the length of these tie plates for whatever your application is. Now, even though this is going to be a longer tie plate, I'm still going to put all the spike holes in for the tie plate. And because this is a frog, I'm going to put a couple extra spikes in on the frog itself. So here is the first spike for the frog. We'll drive that home. Here comes another spike for the frog. And 
we drive that on. I'll put two in on the other side. There's one. And the spike. I'm using Micro Engineering's fine spikes. So there's a little bit of little bit of bend factor sometimes. Drive that one home. One more for the frog. And now, with the frog spike down, we're going to go to the narrow gauge. Now, this third rail for the narrow gauge doesn't carry a lot of weight. And I think we can get away with one spike on each side of the tie plate. So again, find my pre-made hole and drive that spike home. One on the other side. And the narrow gauge third rail is secured. And now we'll cut this custom tie, plank, tie plate to length. And again, with whatever the appropriate over, overhang is for your application, give it a cut. Now I'm going to withdraw it one more time. And here is a fun situation where we have a guardrail and the rail. So I can do both of these at the same time. So again, spike hole, spike hole. I'll go over to the other side. Spike hole, spike hole. Because this is the lightweight narrow gauge third rail, I'm just going to hold it in place with two spikes, one on either side. Another bent spike. This one might be salvageable. Indeed it was. Narrow gauge spike for the other side. And I think because the distance between my narrow gauge third rail and my standard gauge rail is so narrow here I'm going to assume that the track layers used a custom tie plate. And again, I'm just going to put two spikes. Two spikes. And again, because this is just a single gauge from one direction, I'm just going to use two spikes, one on either side. Bent spike, salvageable, perhaps. Yes. And the last spike in this tie on the back side of the standard gauge rail. Exacto knife chisel blade to cut it to width. And there we go. Custom made tie plates for a three rail turn or a dual gauge turnout in O scale.